This video will talk about research questions and how to design research. I'm Matt Russell, and this is a video for the NRSM orientation class. First, what is a research question? This is essentially the question around that you center your research. Uh, and so it's really important to have a good research question before you conduct the research. So what makes a good research question? It needs to be clear, it needs to be focused, concise. It could be complex and it could be arguable. These are different components that make a really good research question uh, that can be good for your research. I'm gonna talk about a specific example from my own research that looked at forest management treatment for the emerald ash borer. And so the emerald ash borer is an invasive insect. Uh, it's been in the United States since at least the early 2000s. It's been in Minnesota since about 2008. And it kills trees, uh, not instantly, but over a couple of year span. Uh, and so particularly in the Twin Cities, you might notice trees like this that have these uh, green bands around them uh, as kind of a public awareness campaign, letting people know that emerald ash borer can potentially kill their ash trees. And so what we're very interested in in this project is to look at the forest management treatments that might result in uh, trees other than ash coming into a forest say after a, a timber harvest. And so I'm going to use this as kind of the example as I work through defining the research question that we set forth in this project. First, it's good to identify the topic. Uh, this is generally uh, a pretty easy thing to do. So in my case, I want to study emerald ash borer in Minnesota. Now it takes a while to get to that research question. And you can see the research question I've listed here. That's ultimately where we ended up, um, but it's not necessarily uh, easy to write that research question. It took some time to develop that with thought and with clarity. And so how do you just go from the topic to the research question? Uh, well, you first obviously need to know the topic and really narrow it down. And so while we started with Emerald Ash Borer in Minnesota, as we narrow down our topic, we're going to be talking now about forest management for emerald ash borer in northern Minnesota. Uh, and so it will be good to narrow your topic once you've identified it. You always want to ask questions about the research question and the topic. You want to pick a question and then really focus that question uh, until it's really uh, pretty narrow and pretty uh, clear in terms of its design. And so here's uh, kind of a mapping effort I've done with emerald ash borer in Minnesota. We've picked the topic and now we want to narrow it. And so here's how we might narrow it. Uh, you can see the topic of emerald ash borer in Minnesota, we could take many different uh, ways to narrow that topic. We could talk about the emerald ash borer and its impacts on forests, uh, the EAB resilience, which we ultimately will do. We could talk about the cultural effects. We could talk about the hydrology effects, how we might utilize the wood from uh, dead ash trees as a result from the emerald ash borer. Where we ultimately landed was we wanted to find out how are our forests resilient to EAB. And so as we began to narrow that even further, we talked about what are the forest management techniques? Uh, how can we better manage our forests to be resilient to emerald ash borer? And specifically, what are those specific treatments, forest management treatments, that might promote tree diversity? Uh, and so that's ultimately uh, where we narrowed our topic was uh, from all the different things we could do and study on emerald ash borer in Minnesota, but we focused on looking at these treatments that could promote tree diversity. And so we then want to ask questions. Uh, and so we want to know, in our case, in our example, which forest management treatments or managers trying in the face of EAB. I think this is a, an important part of natural resources is that there may be lots of different ways to manage uh, these forests, but we want to keep it realistic and to have a real world application in our research, uh, we wanted to first find out what forest management treatments are currently going. We also wanted to know what makes a forest resilient to EAB attack. And we knew that if we had forests that didn't have ash trees, well, because we know that the insect only attacks ash trees, we could think of our forest being resilient to any emerald ash borer attack. And then what about do different forest management treatments and ash dominated forests promote tree diversity? 
Uh, and so that was certainly another question that we asked and ultimately became part of our research. So then we wanted to pick a question. And so we ended up choosing that last question. How do these different forest management treatments uh, in ash dominated forests promote tree diversity? One of the last steps is to really focus the question. And so to talk about who, what, when, and where. And so these are important things that you might include into the research question to really give it focus, to make it clear, and to make it defendable. Notice I don't have the how here. The how is really your methods. Uh, and as a part of the research question, although it'll be important to be thinking about the methods, the research question should really answer the who, what, when, and where. And so we could start with something and we kind of narrowed our, our topic down and our questions down to do different forest management treatments and ash dominated forests promote tree diversity. Uh, well, we're going to scratch that. We're going to really hone in this research question. And so we ultimately selected do selection treatments. So not necessarily not talking about all forest management treatments, but there's a specific kind called selection treatments. Do those promote tree promote more tree diversity than clear cuts and a clear cut being another kind of treatment where most of the trees are, are harvested in an area. Do selection treatments promote more diversity than clear cuts in ash dominated forests in Minnesota 10 years after timber harvesting? So that's pretty specific. That's not necessarily talking about uh, in general what goes on, but we've now limited the study area. Um, to Minnesota, and we now have a time period, uh, 10 years after timber harvesting. And so you can begin to think about, uh, you know, what that kind of looks like. Maybe a, a trained forester will know exactly what you're comparing here, whereas they might not in the previous way we've identified the research question. So this is an example of really looking at each word in that research question and trying to get more specific uh, to make it a more clear and more concise uh, research question. If you do want to see the paper that resulted from this research question, uh, I've got the link there that uh, where you can find the paper. Um, and it was interesting to kind of go through this process um, of showing how a research question is developed to how it ultimately gets into a paper and gets published. Uh, and so I, I've posted the link there if you want to learn more and, and see how, or if you're interested in more in exactly what we did, uh, you can find the paper there. And so you might have a research question, but many of you, particularly in middle school, high school, you know, and maybe even, you know, your college years uh, might have had an assignment. You need to write a thesis, uh, write a, a thesis statement in particular. Um, and so the thesis of an argument really always answers the research question. And so as we have our, our research question there, the thesis of our argument was selection treatments provide more tree and forest diversity 10 years following harvest due to altered light conditions. Um, when it comes to writing, oftentimes the questions for the research are often very uh, toward the end of the introduction in, say, a journal article, whereas the thesis is often um, part of the discussion or maybe even the conclusions of a journal article. Um, and so it's really interesting to see and to really make the connection between, you know, what's the big statement that you can make that answers that research question? Uh, and so there's a lot that goes on in between there. Obviously, you, you're going to do your experiment or your study, uh, and then you're going to summarize it and analyze it maybe with some statistics and ultimately come up with a thesis from your research. A little bit more about research design. Um, and so the design of research is really what methods are you using to collect and analyze different measures or variables uh, that are specified in the research problem? And so in our case, we were looking at forest management treatments. We were looking at those with ash in those forests. Um, and so we knew we'd have to design our research around that. So knowing what information we need is uh, going to make, knowing what our research question is, is going to make the research more efficient at the end of the day. Uh, and so there are lots of different kinds of research design. You don't always have to do experiments. Um, Generally, they experiments, you know, if you think about treatment A, treatment B, uh, maybe it's a, a, a drug trial. You know, some humans get drug A, some humans get drug B, and then they compare, uh, and that's an experiment. 
A lot of research is observational. The independent variables are not necessarily under the control of the researcher. Um, and so this is typically using existing data and observational studies are often collected from surveys, um, be a common way to, uh, to do research. Reviews uh, are kind of an assessment of the current knowledge and theory on a topic. And so these could be literature reviews, uh, so other kinds of systematic reviews. Uh, some of the most highly cited paper, uh, some of the most highly cited papers in uh, in the in the journals and the literature are review papers uh, because it's really helpful if someone uh, doesn't necessarily conduct a really detailed study but synthesizes or assesses the current knowledge across lots of different studies and so those papers are highly read because those review papers synthesize so much so if someone's actually going out and I'm kind of synthesizing everything out there they're doing all the work for you so if you read this review paper you might be able to get a a real more broad assessment of the research in a specific area another way may be a meta analysis uh, so this is an analysis that combines the results from multiple scientific studies um, and so we might not necessarily go and do individual experiments but we might collect you know the the hundred research studies that analyze what we're interested in and in a statistical way kind of using a weighted average uh, compares and kind of synthesizes the results from several individual studies oftentimes research can be confirmatory or exploratory and so confirmatory research is based on uh, making predictions before the measurement phase begins uh, so that's like a prior uh, a priori assessment of what might happen in the research whereas the exploratory is uh, kind of examining a data set and tries to find relations between variables and that's kind of more of a posterior assessment and so um, one of the main things and any of you that that take some statistics classes uh, and especially if you have me I like to I will I will uh, say this often but we don't need to hark when we do analyses. That is, we don't need to hypothesize after our results are known. Um, and so this is when researchers do exploratory research, but present it as confirmatory. And so what do we mean by that? Uh, well, one example is people are kind of doing a statistical analysis, but changing the parameters or changing uh, what's, what significance means in that statistical analysis after they've already known what the results are. Um, and so that's a, an example of harking, um, hypothesizing after you know the results. Another example uh, of, of research studies are case studies. And so these are up close, in depth, and really detailed examinations of a subject of study, uh, or what we might call the case. And so these can be produced using a formal research method. So this can be qualitative or quantitative. Um, case studies are much more common in the social sciences. Uh, so you think pretty much all of the research that Sigmund Freud did uh, could be considered as case studies. Oftentimes in the natural resources disciplines, uh, things might be presented as case studies if uh, an experiment was run, but we, maybe they don't have enough replicates of that experiment. Uh, and so they find some meaningful results, but because they don't have replicates, they maybe don't have as good of a design, and so they might present it as a case study rather than an experiment. Uh, in the social sciences, again, case studies are, are quite common and um, very widespread and have a lot of different methods where you can analyze case studies depending on the nature of the data. And so that's it. That's a wrap of uh, some things to be thinking about when it comes to research questions and research design. And we'll talk more about how you can apply this to your own research to really come up with a specific research question, depending on what you're studying.